Uh, okay, so it's my honor to be here and uh, let me introduce myself. Um, Perfectly, uh, you, uh, lot, the audience just uh, see me the, in the first time. So my name is Wei Wu and my uh, GitHub name is uh, Lisa, uh, Lazy Parser, which is a compiler uh, idiom uh, reflecting my background from the compiler technology. So currently I'm the uh, active maintainer for uh, of the Open Libraries 5 Seek, and uh, my daily job is I, I'm the founder and the director of the PLC lab of uh, ISCAS. ISCAS means Institute of Software, uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. So basically, the uh, my lab is um, man, is very actively maintaining and uh, working on the RISC-V support and uh, uh, any other architectures, and mainly on the compilers simulators and the language virtual machines and uh, uh, the system libraries and the operating kernels, just like the, the, all the fundamental software uh, the IT industry need and we are very passionate about the open source. So we have a lot of uh, collaborations and uh, contributions to the open source projects and the communities. And uh, uh, you see that many focus on the RISC-V side. So uh, in my short, Talk today, we have three points that uh, I want to be as a takeaways. First is that uh, I want to demonstrate what the world I see and uh, what trends I, I predict. The second is that I, see, I treat RISC 5 as uh, the de facto in, uh, standard for the ESA in the near future. And uh, the third is that we now, we now can uh, say Open Eula is very fast, uh, very fast and uh, very advanced on the support on uh, RISC-V supporting. So let's see the first is a big picture. Uh, big picture would say constraints. So first is that the limitation of physics, which res restricts the, the Moore's law. So now we can the, the end of Moore's had to come uh, roughly ten or twenty years ago, and uh, and now we gain performance, uh, the, the performance gains from hardware. So we, do, we can innovate from the microarchitecture innovation. So we designed new microarchitecture uh, for specific domains like the AI. We just invent the, the very shorter floating point standards. And uh, so we can do a lot of parallel things, calculations for the, for the, for the AI for the AI area. So that currently we are in the area of the domain basic architecture area uh, period. So that is the first constraint. And uh, as we mentioned, now AI is very hot now and not, and besides AI, there are many, many com computation needs or demands that was, goes very fast. So we need to conquer when the, when the constraints and the demands they meet, so the software become more and more complicated and uh, the complexity of software grows very fast. So we, if we look back in history, so the early versions of Linux kernel lines of code and uh, the, the, patch, the, the patches committed every year is very fast. And uh, in recent years, when the, when the Linux kernel become, the lines of code of Linux kernel become stable, and the other uh, system uh, software, uh, the software stack, the upper software on the stack will, will grow very fast. And then now we have the AI metrics or the AI models, the, the, the parameters of the AI models and the, uh, grows very fast, it's super linearly. And that reflects the complexity. We, have, we put more and more complexity on the software. And uh, then we hit another constraint, which was very hard, with hard constraint. Uh, I believe that we discussed in the first day of the Open Source Summit. So that's the limitation of developers and the maintainers. We see that the, the, from the black hair to the gray hair. So the number of developers is limited, which has a di direct conclusions or the, or the results is that we can see that in every specific area, so there's, there, there, if there, uh, there's, uh, if there, the open source projects, there's, there, eventually there can be only one or two open source projects can survive and uh, can thrive, and only, and we can conclude safely that in 
look back to the history and uh, predict the future, so there's only a limited number of instruction sets can survive. And I believe, so in my personally, I believe that is RIS-5. So let me explain why RIS-5 can uh, unleash our human crea creativity. So first, the software becomes or uh, uh, became very complicated in, in back into several several years. So what we solve it? We divided, we divided it into different parts, and so a lot of genius, talents, developers, they they design a, a simple interfaces to separate the complexity of all the whole the other whole software system. So now we have a very simple interface of the NIST kernel, the called, called POSIX, and uh, the some uh, simple interface called SQL language to separate the and uh, abstract the complexity in the databases. And so, but you see that there's uh, uh, some uh, red marks here so for the ESA, so it's also not open standard. And so back into 40 years ago when the free, free software movement and the open source movement started. So we unleashed, the people unleashed the, the gray box. The gray box means that there's uh, uh, anything, any software above uh, ESA can be, can be exchanged and released freely under the open source licenses, but but so any hardware design, you could not, you, you're not permitted to put online or share with your friends publicly, because the ESA is not free. And uh, that is where the risk five sits. Now, af now when, after we have a risk five as an open standard, you can freely use it and uh, you can freely change, uh, publish, release your source code uh, of your CPU or SOC. So you can, now we turn into the red box. Anyone can change both your hardware design and your software implementations on the GitHub. So that's definitely, that, that's greatly improved the possibility and, uh, and uh, enlarge the design space if we, we can explore. So especially in the area of the uh, domain-specific domain architecture. So there's a short summary of the, the goods of the RIS-5. First is a good timing, which I think is very important and the most important thing is that it just in the in good time. If the, if the RIS-5 was invented um, 10 years or 20 years earlier, it will be vanished and it, 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 it could not survive. But um, when the RIS-5 was invented back into the 2010 to 2013, so there's a lot of research teams in universities, they are trying to find a new ESA for the 64 instructions, instruction sets. So of course there's, there's no, there was no open standards that researchers can use. And, uh, so, uh, and the RISC-5 uh, team was, uh, was initially give a very, very concrete, very, very simple uh, design. So, less than 50 instructions. So, it's, as it's, it's, it's too small. So, you can just put the implementation in any physical designs or the, or the SOC designs. You can just drop a RISC-5 controller in every, in every chip that you can find a, a, a just a small area, so you can put it in. So in the embedded area and the, and the, the, the open source RIS-5 also provides the compiler, the kernel, the free atos, uh, and even the NIST kernel in a very early stage, in, in a very early stage. So suddenly, every in-house chip designs was replaced. And uh, so the third is that uh, the RIS-5 does not treat it as a, a property. They, they just put it as, as an open standard and uh, they established a, a foundation called RIS-5 International and is moved to the Europe uh, five years ago to avoid the geopolitical issues. So keep it neutrality. So also there's a, a new business model. So yes, nowadays you can just choose when you design a new product or you want to 
design a new chip, you just choose a RISC V and you have you suddenly find hundreds of vendors you can choose as your providers. And uh, not not only one or one or only one or two suppliers uh, can can provide you the the, the products you, you 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 need to use. So and the last, but the, I think that's most important and in the long term, is that the open standard RISC V makes you any undergraduate students they can study how to design new chips, how to do their in, innovations and research in an open source way. So, and if the, if the universities choose to release it using uh, some uh, commercial friendly license, they, you, they can even use all the hardware designs in their school and uh, in the after, after they leave the school. So that's a very, I think that's a very important aspect, uh, a very important impact. So for the AI area, so I'm simply to say, so I'm just telling the, the, the facts and the truth. So RISC five is winning the next round, and uh, almost uh, now you, ha as a AI startup, you're not choosing RISC five as your as your controller. So that's a very strange thing. You may need a lot of a reason, uh, a strong enough reason to say uh, to to explain why you're not choosing RISC five. So this is all the big companies, startups, and uh, the AI. The, the, the AI startups, they are, they are using RISC five. And back into the next month, in August, uh, uh, late August, so the uh, RISC five International from uh, Crystal, uh, the Professor Crystal was uh, was uh, a leader and the inventor team of the RISC five. So they just uh, uh, get a, give a very good summary. So you can see, you may see it on the on the YouTube on the uh, in in a few weeks. So so we can safely say the RISC V is the standard base core in new AI accelerators. So we, we are not saying that the, the you can you can use in RISC V to to program the, your AI accelerators like GPGPU, but every chip so as accelerators they need a basic control core, and the control core now is is basically RISC V. So this uh, a market share predict um, roughly uh, six years in, in six years. So th this is the data is from the Risk Five International, Krista Redmond, uh, the CEO of the RVI. And this is a more aggressive predictions that's from me. I'm the manager of the project Jachen. So we said in, in ten years uh, after twelve years. So in the mar embedded market and uh, all new chip or new uh, CPUs will be, the, will, will, they will use RISC V instruction sets and uh, for the HPC area we can see that, we will see that in the, in the world top 500 HPC servers, we can see, we, we predict that 20% that, that, uh, of the new HPC will be use RISC V and uh, use the, as, as the main controllers. And to solve this, we have done a lot of works on the software side. So my team was working on uh, is is working on the, the project called the, called the Rui SDK. It's, uh, it's just for developers. So we said the the RISC five has its um, own characteristics. So everyone every company can design its own RISC V chip and uh, can design his custom instructions. So, and uh, the software community, so they, they can only support the standard instructions for the RISC V. And there's many, there, there are many custom vendor specific instructions and the combinations of the RISC V needs to be supported. When the software, when the program, programmer or the developer from the other Area they they switch it to the RISC V. The first thing they will be very um, they, they, they find it very hard is to find the suitable and uh, suitable combination of tools to get the things done. So we saw, we trying to get uh, a tool set called the Rui SDK. So they can just uh, combine when you have a new board or the chip just. Uh, just input the name and uh, the model name of the chip, so we can give a list of the work uh, list of combinations of open source softwares or the commercial softwares that they can work. They, they, they can work 
on the on the chip. So and uh, the other big project big project we are working on is uh, for the operating system support. Basically, uh, in la in the last five years, almost all these distributions was uh, what well, well, the support for the RISC five was done. Um, and uh, you see that when the, the green color, the the this uh, the middle line is the, the language machines which we are supporting, and the upper the upper layer is just demonstrating how uh, how the uh, as the operating system supported the good uh, if the if the operating system names was uh, in the in the green background which means a very good support and in the uh, in the shallow yellow background I means they has a uh, uh, they, they have good support but some of important softwares we observed was not supported yet is still in a progress and we see that Omeula is very is very is in a very good support. I will explain later. So and so it's a basic score. So if you see if if you want any software to be run on RISC five and not and the, the the software not supported yet, just like the open HPC. So I will give the support. I will reach out to the companies and try to donate some machines to to the to the community and try to get all the soft open source software has worked. So and not only for the uh, the the, the uh, rough uh, gra granular uh, rough uh, the, the open system supported or not, we can divide and uh, into the very specific softwares. So, given uh, the name of the software, we can we want to get a result. We want to test it and uh, verify whether the software can be run on the specific operating systems on the a specific. Uh, Linux developer boards or the hardware. So that's a very big matrix, contains uh, tens of thousands uh, data points. So we are still trying to uh, we are trying to fill all the all the blocks. You can see that the the blocks with the white or gray uh, background is is just uh, uh, the data not available yet. We are we are called for new um, vol volunteers to testing on it. So when the, the, the different color means different test, test status results. So and uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, latest uh, ambitious goal. So we want to uh, get all the risk files to cover all the uh, IT scenarios in 12 years. And uh, so and the uh, open EULA is very uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a leading operating system that uh, to implement our uh, ambitious goal. So basically, uh, I think uh, and I believe that uh, you, you saw this picture right before. So OpenEULA is very popular in mainland China and uh, it becomes uh, the de facto the, the leading um, architecture uh, in, area, uh, in, in China and especially so in the RISC-5 area, OpenEULA is moving very fast. So this is a, a just a brief history. So uh, my slides is also open, so we, we can get. So I will skip this uh, some details. You can see just that the many companies and uh, uh, in in the in the last five uh, in last four years, the many companies joined in, and uh, a lot of softwares will get supported and integrated into the Open Eula RISC Five edition. So uh, and uh, the. The, 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 there's a very large team, so including uh, roughly, I say, um, roughly six, more than more than 60 staff and uh, more than 200 interns, or uh, are working on this, uh, working on the uh, Open Eula just on the RISC Five architecture. So they are trying to port a lot of software to the Open Eula. So and uh, and uh, last year we are re reaching a very good state, and uh, in the in the uh, late uh, late, late uh, April, so the latest LT version get released, and uh, in this version, the RISC five becomes the first time came a tier one architecture support of the RISC five. So, and the the, the last is some just a background uh, overview. It's so just uh, the same. 
So um, we are trying, we were trying our best to get all the infrastructures uh, to abide with or, the, or the, to align with the other architectures like the, the ARM or the uh, MD64. So now we have, we now have more than, more than uh, 80, 80 RISC V servers. The servers including 64 core RISC V uh, cores and they can compile, they can, they can build all the open user system natively on RISC V and for RISC V. So there's a, just a demonstration that uh, on the server side, a lot, basically we all put in, all the software is ported to RISC V, uh, but I, I need to emphasize that it's not the work. We, we just do some, some of the work uh, to put in and lots of just uh, like the Redis, like the Jenkins, the, uh, the, the porting works were, were not done by us, it's by the, the whole global community. So we are very uh, appreciate that. So only the, we just only put some, some like iOS. So the, uh, the iOS project is already working on the Ubuntu, which is supporting to the open user and then make it work. So, and for the desktop and the PC area, so we have, we do have some uh, uh, contribution work. So they're just in the LibreOffice, that's the team behind the open user. So gets the, gets the LibreOffice work on the RISC five and put to the, and we just uh, contribute back to the to the uh, upstream. So currently, the LibreOffice uh, it, it supports RISC V architecture officially, uh, I think. And the Debian. So we we also put a lot of uh, on the Debian or the other distributions. So and hopefully the the, the patches as will be get up, uh, accepted soon. So and uh, uh, this this was. Uh, this was the developer uh, we showed that was supported by the Open Euler RISC V edition. And uh, um, some of them was uh, sold globally and uh, be dispatched by the RISC V International. So if you want a uh, board, you can just uh, uh, feel free to try to write an email to the RISC V International. There's a, a program called a Dev Boards program, they can, they were delivered or, or, or sent the developers free, for free to the, to the open source developers uh, worldwide. So back uh, to, uh, this is, this was my, uh, this is my last slide. So we have some work, um, probably at the PSDT lab just to uh, contribute, implement and contribute a, a few uh, patch, big patches on the, uh, on, the, on the compiler and the virtual machine uh, area. So we have a very, uh, very inspiring and, uh, and very good results, especially on the, on the Box 64 and on the Spider Monkey. And we also the maintainer for the V8, uh, RIS5, for RIS5 backend, and the OpenJDK uh, RIS5 backend. So, and uh, um, any communications and the questions and uh, the, the, the uh, follow up. Uh, Collaborations are welcome. Yes, thank you. So, any questions? Yeah. Are you aware of any CI provider that a public uh, open source project can use to test on this file? For example, it's GitHub. Uh, yeah, GitHub Actions, they support only x 64 and ARM support. For ARM, usually people use Circle CI, but I Yes, yeah, that's, that's the main goal that we want to achieve by the end of the year and the, the uh, first half of the next year. So we are working on this. Currently, uh, the, the main achievement uh, is to get the GitHub uh, supported with five natively. And we have three steps to do. We have, a, uh, we have just done the three step. The last step is that, uh, you know, that GitHub is is uh, hosting his um, infrastructure, infrastructure on the Microsoft Azure. And uh, we want to, so we need to the Azure cloud service to help to get the RISC V deployed and uh, use it. And before that, the GitHub uh, actions also support the, the, the custom CI installers and uh, the software is open source and the software for the for the, and the software, the GitHub Actions use, it depends on Go language. And the Go language needs the RISC-V porting. 
and uh, some a group of uh, contributors they had done the porting of the Go language and the environment is very in a very good status, and uh, now we have we have uh, the the downstream the downstream implementation for the CI infrastructure, and uh, we also have uh, the the called the CI ecosystem labs collaborated with the Recipe International. We provide two hundreds of the MH board and. Uh, the Soviet uh, and the Pioneer Box interventions with also the RIS5 CPUs, so uh, fr freely to the open source projects, but not, uh, we are still in, it's uh, in the stage two. And the stage three is the GitHub, we are, we are still working on it. And we see that we may have uh, six or 12 months uh, in, in advance. And uh, if you want to try, you can just write an email to me, I will provide to you the, some freely. And uh, uh, you, you can just uh, log into it, uh, either as a normal user or as a root. You can just uh, do what thing you want on the uh, single board. Uh, currently, we are not um, not provided as a cloud service. We just give a physical machine. You can just uh, uh, log into it and use it. And, uh, and, uh, and besides that, uh, the currently the OpenGTK community, uh, Debian community, OpenEura community, and uh, uh, as far as I know, the Node.js community they are using the the uh, CI infrastructure provided by the PLC Lab and uh, the RISC-V International to get the their uh, RISC-V version uh, to pass the CI process. Yeah. Our next question. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I want to know uh, from, uh, uh, from your side, uh, what's the biggest change on the road to the uh, on, on what side? Oh, what, what? Uh, uh, what's the, the biggest uh, change uh, of the uh, file to the future? Yeah, so I think the big challenge we are facing, and I try to uh, try to fix or uh, try to solve using the project judgments uh, that we are shifting the, the the porting work and we are shifting from the open source world to the commercial world. So we are safe to say or uh, predict that open source world has embraced RISC V and uh, almost all open source world projects they will eventually support RISC V and we will have enough volunteers. And the financial resources to get and uh, the the physical machines to get this done, and for the commercial software, that's another story. Uh, the the entry the, the level to get it supported, the initial resources, the the demands of the re initial resources are very high, so we need to uh, solve this. Yes, uh, we saw the the uh, first mover disadvantages. So for this five year open standard and all the software supported, they are very open. So if a company, uh, if a software company wants to get his commercial software support with five, they need some motivation and, uh, and the financial return. And uh, so if a chip company, just like the, the you, you build the RISC-5 PC, you want a software to, to run on your PC. So you may need to have some, uh, to, to some budgets to get it. But once you get the software put on the on your RISC-V machines or products, so certainly all your all all your the, the all the other RISC-V companies will get also get the support for the software. So it's very it's very easy to put the 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 software who who has already run on your RISC-V machines to their RISC-V machines. So that's a that's a that, that's because we we say that it's a cool. So so who will pay the first initial the, the, the initial money? And that's the question. We have three different models. So if the area is the only one big player, the big player will we are willing to pay. And if the area is uh, have several that's a dozen a dozen or two dozen players, and uh, some of them will combine as a as a majority the the, the the majority of the market, and they may. Has a trim. They will they pay, pay just like Nero and the Rice Foundation. They, uh, they, they are doing, and the third is the market is very 
it's, it's, it's too, so many companies yes, and no one can uh, combine as the majority. So that's maybe we, we need some uh, government or the, or the government uh, uh, driven. So like the EU and the US and the China, so we also have a lot, lot of uh, funding, uh, state funding or the national funding to get uh, some, uh, the, some things done. And the China is, uh, and the EU, they, they both are very uh, investing a lot of uh, money and the resources on the risk five. So I think that the more challenges is the, get the commercial world to get uh, accept the risk five. That is not the, that will not be a smooth way. It's been a very stiff way to get. That we, we, have a, we have to negotiate and uh, a, a very large of resources to get things done. Okay. Uh, uh, since you say the, the risk five is an open uh, standard, standard yeah. Yeah. so will it be a split ecosystem thing? Uh, every manufacturer can have his own uh, implementation of the hardware? Yeah, sure, definitely. So uh, this year, so uh, risk five was so successful to be misunderstood as an open source uh, hardware. So they are trying to, RISC V itself uh, is an open standard. It's just a specification. Everyone can implement it, this uh, specification and uh, you can have your own hardware. It, it could, you, can, you could open source it, you could keep it commercial and uh, we see that RISC V has the commercial IP, RISC V IP core and uh, the, the uh, the OpenHW group and uh, adopts a lot, a lot of open source course was donated by the uh, European universities. There are many univer uh, universities in Europe. They donated their open source course. Um, that's, that, and uh, and uh, any of them can implement their, their customer instruction sets. So they are just uh, in the specification of RIS-5, they divide into two parts and uh, one part is that no one, can, uh, no vendors can use this. It was uh, reserved for the future users as a as a standard, as a, a respiring international uh, standard. And uh, the, there's uh, some area, so every every vendors they can they can design their own custom in this in this data point uh, in this data points. So uh, I'm not sure that uh, I answered the, all your questions. Yeah, there, there, there were a lot of discussions on this, and uh, for I'm I'm kind of an optimistic way. So uh, so there's a basic the common uh, called standard extensions that need to, that need to be uh, implemented and supported for the open source uh, community, and uh, and for the customer instructions, um, the diff the 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 right and and the, they are they are in the hand of the uh, communities uh, open source communities itself. So given that some uh, the kernel community, the maintainers of the kernel, they will say that we will support A and B for the this silicon fight, and uh, there's uh, hundreds millions or tens of millions of uh, the, the ship shipments. And uh, for the other com uh, other open source projects, uh, so the, roughly they said we uh, we choose to only support all the standard extensions which are approved and ratified from the RISC-5 International. So that's, that's uh, it's, not, it's not a very uh, all, in, all consensus in one policy. In fact, so we respect all the, each open source com community and uh, each maintainers uh, or the technical, uh, technical community, they will have its own choice, but they have a common core. The common core is that open uh, the, the, the standard extensions are ratified from the RIS-5 RIS International, they will get supported. And the others is just, uh, we see that where the, the, the innovations and uh, the competitions happens. It's happening, and uh, uh, we, we don't see, see that a big trouble. Of course, that is in a different uh, different uh, scenarios. 
So for the embedded scenarios, they are very focused on how to reduce the code size. So they, have, they will have smaller ROMs. And for the high, high performance, they just let's get, get rid of the, 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 the compact uh, instructions and get more data points. We can just uh, a very long instructions. Yeah. And uh, it's just a competition. But for the RISC-V, you, you see that it's a, it's a one instruction includes a so large range of scenarios. And in each scenario, there were competitions, very heavily, very heavy competitions. And you see some, sometimes it's always a fragmentation, but we see that there's a diversity on the, on the different scenarios. Yeah, so uh, basically, I see that most of softwares uh, is written in the C++ and uh, that uh, higher uh, high-level language, they can just recompile and uh, you can run on RISC-V. And uh, three, for three areas, or three, um, three kinds of codes that need to be put uh, and, uh, against the expert uh, or domain experts or programs involved. One is that if the software porting is a compiler or just has a compilation components, so that need, may need so you, you need to write a backend in this. So just uh, take an example. We ha now have web browser. This has a, uh, uh, the engine for the JavaScript. And the JavaScript nowadays is not um, they, they're not executed in, by the interpreter. So they have a just in time compilers. So if the, the the JavaScript code runs more than ten times, they are trying to just in time compile into the native code. And when you turn native code. And right now, risk five. We need we need a new backend. So that's a, that's a case. Oh, the first case. The second case is that if if you are porting the system software, so we directly interact with the hardware. So uh, especially the kernel of the of uh, the, the next kernel or the kernel of our system, uh, that needs you will need to deal with just uh, uh, just the same as the other uh, software. Just, just if you want to support. Uh, uh, network card, or the or the or the video card. So you need to do some uh, this this porting work. And the third is that if uh, if the software is high performance or the some domain they use they they use the the domain experts to uh, already wrote some codes for the for the extensions in the in the in x86 uh, or the ARM. So not like the neon or the or the AVX code. So if you won't get the same performance, we need to port it to the to the uh, the, the vector extensions or something else. So otherwise, if, if you recompile, it's just uh, reduced or, or downgrade to the normal instructions, and uh, the it can run. The function the, the function will be uh, the, the, the correct, but the performance will downgrade. Really. Unless we have some experts and. Uh, to get to port it manually, and we have some um, tools to get uh, to port to to rewrite the uh, code, the the um, neon code, and something that to the RISC-V extensions. So they can do some uh, semi automatically, uh, but the performance portability is not guaranteed. We need to test it to get the performance uh, to test the benchmark, get the results, and try the the uh, if there's any other benefits. Uh, the, the, the potential benefits we can to to uh, improve the code, yeah. So that's the three kinds we need. But uh, as we observed, that uh, more than uh, ninety-five percent of the code in a, in a, in the Debian uh, code, big code base has uh, 20,000 uh, 20, packages, and uh, uh, in, in this um, volume, so that, that they can be recompiled freely. Uh, just recompile and you get the, the things right. So I think that uh, there was. Uh, uh, is there a ne uh, next question? I see um, the audience beggar was raising right hand. But <laughs> sorry. Uh, 
So uh, you mean Rice Foundation in the Europe? Yeah, so the ISCAS is also the, the street member of the Rice Foundation. The PSD Lab, we also has uh, two FT full-time engineers uh, the, the, uh, working with the Rice Foundation and the, the, and the, and, and the, the system libraries and uh, the, uh, the CI works. So, and uh, the, um, I see that more than six um, companies in mainland China was, uh, had joined Rice Foundation last year. Okay. Yeah.